Hey team, we're gonna learn how you can use AI to automatically tag and label all of your images using Cloudinary and Google Vision AI. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. If you've gone to any of the popular image search sites like Unsplash, you're able to use real words to try to look up what's actually inside of the picture that you wanna find, such as if I look up mountain, we can see that it's going to go to a bunch of results well with a mountain inside. Now, sometimes all these tags are actually handcrafted and picked by either the source author or the site itself, but we can also use tools like AI or artificial intelligence where we can actually have the computer read the image inside of the program and then actually determine what's inside. Particularly, our use case is going to use Google Vision AI, which is an API that allows us to do exactly that, where if we scroll down and we actually try this API, and I actually select that same image that we were just looking at, we can see that Vision AI is gonna go through after I confirm that I am indeed not a robot, but it's going to actually determine all the different things that are inside of this picture, where it's pretty confident that it both has a sky and a mountain. Now to actually run this processing, we're gonna use Cloudinary, which is a media platform, where on top of image delivery and transformation services, it's also a digital asset management, where we can actually manage all these images, specifically with these automatically created labels, right inside of our dashboard. In particular, we're gonna use an add-on to Cloudinary called Google Auto Tagging, where as soon as we enable it, we now have the ability to configure Google Vision AI on our uploads. That way we can grab all those labels and categorizations as we actually process them. Now to actually get productive and seeing how this works, we're gonna use Next.js, which is a React framework, where it gives a lot of features on top of React, such as having smart data fetching methods and even API routes. In particular, we're going to use this demo image upload starter that I created where it's really just a bare bones application with a simple upload widget where it's going to load our image that we select into the application where we can then use to upload it to Cloudinary. Now, if you want to follow along, you can find the link to this demo starter right inside of the YouTube description, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this starter link called Yarn Create Next App. And I'm going to grab the plain text version of it, and then I'm going to also append my tagged Cloudinary images right at the end so that it's going to go ahead, grab this starter project from GitHub, pull it down into a local directory for me. It's also going to install all the dependencies and basically initialize this, this application for me so that I can get started immediately. And we can see it's already done. So I'm going to navigate over to my cl tagged Cloudinary images and I'm going to run yarn dev and it's going to spin up a local server where if I load it up inside of my browser, we can see that we have this basic image uploader where I can go ahead and now choose a file and let's ch choose that same mountain photo as before, where as soon as it loads into the UI, we see we now have the ability to upload, where it's not actually able to upload quite yet, but that's where the functionality that we're going to add is going to come in. Now we're going to dive in a little bit more closely to some of this code, but if we want to just get a basic idea of what's inside, we can go to pagesindex.js, which is going to be the basic homepage for our application, where we can see that we're using some React state. We have a few uh, functions where we'll get into this file reader in a second, where we can see that when we try to submit the form, which is our input for uploading, selecting and uploading an image, we run that handle on change and handle on submit functions, which is really the bulk of this actual application as it sits, where we're not doing anything on submit, that's where we're going to add some new code, but when it's on change, we're going to actually read the file into the application. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to take this image that we load into our page. We're going to first upload it into Cloudinary. And when we upload it into Cloudinary, we're going to pass in a configuration, which allows us to specify the add-on that we want to use, which we will also enable inside of the Cloudinary dashboard. Now, the way that we're going to upload to Cloudinary is we're going to use a signed request, meaning we need to pass in our cloud name, our API key, and our API keys or API secret, which we don't want to actually expose on the client side. So we need to do this server side in Node. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create serverless functions as API endpoints, where we're going to be able to post whatever image data we want to that endpoint. The endpoint will then take that data and upload it to Cloudinary, where we'll use the Cloudinary SDK to fulfill that request. So to get started, we want to actually create our first serverless function as our API endpoint. And to do that, we're going to navigate over to Pages API, where we can see we already have this hello.js, which is simply a sample function that we can see how this works. But we're going to go ahead and duplicate that file, and we're going to call it upload.js. We're inside, we can see that we have the same content here, but let's just 
clean this up a little bit and let's return success equals true just to make sure it works. I'm going to get rid of the comment because we don't need to use that right now. Now to see that this is actually working, I can take that same localhost 3000, open it up in a new tab. I'm going to navigate to slash API slash upload, where we can see that because we're running a get request, we're able to immediately get that response. Now, when we're actually using this endpoint in practice, we're going to be sending data to the actual endpoint, where in this instance, we're getting that endpoint. When we post data to that, we're not going to be able to simply open it up inside the browser. So we're going to need to do that inside of our application. So let's do exactly that, where I'm going to scroll down to this handle on submit function, which again, will actually fire anytime I click that upload button, where I'm going to now create a new constant called data. And I'm going to set that equal to await. And I'm going to run the fetch command. Where I'm going to say, I want to send this request to slash API slash upload. And let's add a new options argument afterwards as a new object, where I'm going to say that I want the method to be post as we're going to be sending data with that. But then I want to also send a body. And when we send the body, we want to actually send it as a string. So I'm going to say json.stringify, and I'm going to pass in an object into that stringify argument. And let's just for now say test equals true, just to make sure that this is working. Now, additionally, because I want this data to actually be JSON, I can then ch chain on a then, where I'm going to say I just want my response to be turned into JSON when it gets returned. So before we test this out, let's add a console log so we can actually see what this data looks like before we actually continue on. Now, in order to actually accept that data inside of our API endpoint, we need to come back to our upload.js where we're going to say, I want my constant data to equal JSON parse, where now because we took it, made it into a string, we want to take it back into a JavaScript object where we're going to pass in the request req.body, which is going to, going to contain all that data. And what we can do is simply return that data instead of the success equals true so that we can see what that looks like when we're actually posting it. So now if I open up my browser and I actually go ahead and select that image again, I can go down and click upload file and we can see that we console log out that data, which has that test equals true, which is exactly what we posted from inside the application. So next, we don't want to just send an object like this. We want to send our image data, which we're going to take and we're going to upload up to Cloudinary. So the next thing we want to do is actually install the Cloudinary SDK. If we find the Cloudinary package on NPM, we can see that we can install with NPM install Cloudinary, where I'm going to run yarn add Cloudinary, and we can see that it's going to grab our package. We're now at the top of my upload file. I'm going to say I want constant Cloudinary to equal require Cloudinary but I don't want to only require Cloudinary. I want to also grab the .v2 property, which is going to give me the actual v2 instance of the library, which I'm going to use for my Cloudinary SDK. So now in order to actually start using the SDK, because we're going to do signed uploads, we need to run the config function. And what we're going to do is pass in the cloud name, API key, and API secret. So right under my import statement, I'm going to run cloudinary.config, where I'm going to pass in an object with my cloud name, my API key, and my API secret. Now, technically, we can add these values as strings right inside of this function. But if we ever want to put this on Git or share the code, we're going to immediately compromise our API key and API secret if we're actually storing those values directly in this file. So instead, we want to use environment variables so that we can store it outside of Git or wherever we're sharing this code so that we can use it, but use it securely. So for my cloud name, I'm going to use process.env.cloudinary cloud name, which technically our cloud name doesn't need to be secret since it's public when the images or videos are getting loaded in the browser anyways. But since we're storing everything else there, we might as well. For my API key, I'm going to do the same thing, but call it Cloudinary API key. And then finally, for my API secret, I'm going to do yet again the same thing, but call it Cloudinary API secret and make sure that I actually fix this colon here. So now we actually need to define these values and set them up locally. And to do that, we're going to create a file in the root of our project called .env.local, which is the Next.js convention for creating environment variables, where I'm going to copy all those variable names over into this file, where I can then set them up with the values to actually load them inside of the application. Now, to actually find these values, we can head over to our Cloudinary dashboard, where right at the top under account details, we have our cloud name, our API key, and our API secret. So all we need to do is hover over and click the copy key, which is going to copy that string to our clipboard, where we can then paste it right inside of our environment variable file. 
And once we have all those values in here, we can click save. And once we have that ready, we have to restart Next.js. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you cancel out your local server and run Yarn Dev again. So now that we actually have Cloudinary configured, let's go ahead and upload our image. Now, when we're actually submitting this request, we're going to want to pass the image data right along with this object that we're stringifying and sending up to our API endpoint. Now, the tricky thing here is we're dealing with image data, but luckily the way that this application already works is we already have a string like value that represents that image that we're going to be able to use. Now, to try to explain how this works, anytime someone actually uploads an image using the input inside of this form, we're going to be able to run this on change handler. Now, if we go up to this on change handler, we can see that we're creating a new reader using file reader, which is a web API where we're able to actually read that file that we selected as a data URL, which we're going to then store inside of our react state, which we'll be able to use for that upload. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us a string, which is a base 64 encoded version of that image, which we're going to post up to our API endpoint. So because it's using this set image source to actually store in state, we can use this image source variable and pass it right alongside this body. So I'm going to pass in image and set that equal to image source. We're inside of my function. We can see that we have our constant data and I'm going to go ahead and just destructure that image where this image is now going to be that string that represents our image. We can see exactly what that looks like by console logging this out where now if I choose my file and I actually try to upload this, we can see that, well, I got an error because I never removed that data constant after we changed it to image, but we can see we have this long string of a bunch of random characters that if we scroll all the way up to the top of this string, if it ever stops, we can see that we have our data URL, which is data colon image JPEG. And we can see that it's encoded as base 64, which is exactly what we need, which we're going to pass now into the Cloudinary SDK. So now right under that image, I'm going to say constant results is equal to cloudinary.uploader.upload. And I'm going to pass in simply that image value. Now, two things we want to additionally do here, and they're very important. First of all, we want to make sure we run a wait on this upload request as we're doing this asynchronously so that we actually have the results that we can pass back inside of this JSON instead of the data. We're going to pass in directly results, but we also want to make sure that we're exporting a default async function so that we have our async await here so that we can make sure that we are correctly defining that function. Now back inside of our actual application, we can now take those results or that data and we can use it to both set that image source to replace it with the Cloudinary source, but we can also set the upload data so that we can actually see what those results look like. So I'm going to go ahead and run both of those functions where for set image source, I'm going to run data dot secure underscore URL, as I already know that's going to be the proper name for the actual image URL inside of the results. But then for set upload data, I'm going to just going to simply set it as data, which that means it's going to print out right inside of the page because we're just simply doing that right at the bottom of this current application. But now if I head back to the browser and I actually upload one of the files like that mountain from before, we can see that once it's done, we get all of that information directly printed to the screen. And I'm specifically not scrolling down so you can't see my real API key, but we see this secure URL along with all the other metadata, which is exactly that URL that we want in order to open it, where we can see that we now have that mountain file, but it's coming directly from Cloudinary. So now that we're successfully uploading our image up to our Cloudinary Media Library, let's now enable our Google auto tagging so we can take advantage of AI using Google Vision AI. Once we're inside of the Cloudinary dashboard, we can head over to the add on section where we can see we have a lot of different options for what we can add. But particularly what we want to look for is this Google auto tagging, which I'm going to go ahead and click, which it drops down where we can see information about the add on as well as the plan where we can see for free, we get 50 monthly categorizations. So this should suffice for our use case here, but we can also see some of the code that we can use where this of course isn't JavaScript, but we can see that we can pass in our image name along with this categorization so that we can set up Google tagging as well as provide the actual metric for what kind of confidence we want for automatic tagging when we're actually going through that processing. 
So I want the free plan, so I'm gonna go ahead and click free, where it's going to subscribe. I might need to click agree, but because I've already done this before, I have already agreed to the terms of service, but you might see that pop up in a modal where you'll just need to click agree before you can actually sign up for that free plan. But really, that's all we needed to do to enable the add-on. So now we can pass in that data to our upload command, just like they're doing here, where we can now turn on auto-tagging. So back inside of my code, I'm going to head to this Cloudinary Uploader upload function, where I'm going to pass in a second argument, where I'm going to say for my categorization, which I think I spelled it right there, we're going to say we want to pass in Google tagging. And then we're going to add that second argument for auto tagging, where we're going to say we want the confidence level to be above 0.6 in order to actually add it as a tag to our media. But now if I head back over to my image uploader app and I actually select that photo again of the mountains and we can click upload just like we did before, we can see that we're going to get that success request. But this time we see that we have this array of tags where we can see things like what are inside of the photo, like sky and mountain, just like we saw on that Google Vision AI page, where if we scroll down even further, we can even see the categorization of this, where we can see the confidence that it was for each and every one of those, where it was pretty darn confident that it had a sky and a mountain and even clouds inside of that picture. Just as a second example, let's reload it. And this time, let's choose this nice looking beach where I'm gonna click upload. And again, on success, we're gonna see that we get all that same data. And let's look at the categorization where we can see that it's pretty confident as cloud, it has water, it has skies, it even has those birds, which we could see right at the top of the image. So it was very clear in being able to discover automatically what was inside of that image. Now we can even see that right inside of our media library where we can see I already have a bunch of images that I uploaded, but if we navigate to that beach image, we can see under metadata that we have all those tags that we saw right inside that response where we can even remove tags if we don't like something that it added or if we want to just be a little bit more selective. Now to see a quick practical use case of this, if we head back to our media library and we click this advanced search and we click under tags, we can actually see a bunch of our tags right that we're able to select as if we were able to select only the ones that apply to that. So for instance, if I select astronomical object, Cloudinary is going to reload and it's only going to show those images that make sense with that particular tag. So we can do something very similar right inside of our own application where we can first list a bunch of our tags. When somebody selects a tag, we can make an additional request to grab all the images from our media library that actually match that tag. So to start, the very first thing I wanna do is grab all of my tags. Now to do that, we need to make another authenticated request in order to use the admin API. So first of all, I'm gonna just simply duplicate this upload.js file and let's call this tags where I'm gonna remove most of this stuff except for this Cloudinary call, along with the body as I don't need that, but I'm gonna run the api.tags function. And I'm going to also set a max results of 50, just so that we get a little bit more inside of that. And we're gonna simply pass back the results just like we're doing already. Now, in order to grab these tags, I need to do two things. The first thing I need to do is actually make a request for the tags, but then I'm gonna store those tags in state so that I can actually display them into the page. So to do this, I'm going to import the use effect function where as soon as the page actually loads, I'm going to run this function inside of my use effect where I'm going to pass in an empty array because I only want it to run once, but inside I'm going to create an immediately invoked function, an async function called run because inside I want to include my logic and have that run right away, but I want to also be able to run async await because I feel like it's a little bit nicer of a way to run promises, but inside I'm going to say I want my constant data to equal await my fetch and I'm going to fetch slash API slash tags where I'm going to say I also want to chain on that then for my response to turn it into JSON. But then finally, I'm going to say that I want to use a new state instance that I'm going to create in a second here. And I'm going to say I want to use set tags and I'm going to set that equal to data dot tags as I know that that's going to be where that data lives at. Now, in order to actually create that new state instance, I'm going to simply clone one of these lines. I'm going to say my constant of tags for my state. I'm going to use set tags just like I used below. But now let's actually show what this these tags look like inside of the UI. So I'm going to scroll down all the way into right below my header, where I'm going to actually paste in this snippet, where all I'm doing is I'm creating an unordered list if those tags actually exist, where I'm going to say for every single tag, I'm going to return a list item with a button that includes that tag. 
Now we can see once the page reloads, we have 50 of our tags that exist inside of our media library. As long as we went through the same steps that I just did, where we uploaded media that has tags associated with it. Now what I want to happen is anytime I click one of these tags, I want to save that value into state. And once that state value changes, I want to make a new search request to my media library and return any of the images that match that tag. So before we actually jump into the actual code inside of React, we want to create a new endpoint where what we're going to do is we're going to return our images. But what we want to do is we want to pass in a tag value to that endpoint, similar to what we did with upload, but we want to use that value to pass it to the resources by tag endpoint so that we can get all the resources related to that tag. So the first thing we're going to do with this images endpoint is at the top, I'm going to say constant and I'm going to destructure tag. I'm going to set that equal to JSON parse my request.body, just like we did with the upload. And instead of this cloudinary.api tags, I'm going to say that I want cloudinary API resources by tag, and I'm going to pass in that tag value. So next inside the application, I want to be able to set an active tag. So I'm going to clone that tags state again, and I'm going to say active tag, and I want to set my active tag, and I'm going to copy the set active tag function. I'm going to say that on click, so whenever somebody clicks that button, I'm going to fire this function, particularly the set active tag function, which passes in that value and sets active tag to that tag value. Now, just to make sure that works, I'm going to go ahead and console log that value out. And we can see now that if we click any of those buttons, we're going to get those tag values as our active tag. So next, let's actually send that tag value up into our endpoint and get all resources associated with it. So what I'm going to do is clone this use effect. And I'm going to say that when I have my active tag, anytime that active tag changes or is going to also trigger the first time when it loads, it's going to run this request where I'm going to say I want to hit the API images endpoint, but I only want to run it if we have an active tag. So I'm going to say if no active tag, I'm going to return out of that function. But if we do have an active tag, I'm going to run this fetch API images request. Where I'm going to pass in my second argument. I'm going to say method post, just like my upload post from earlier, where I'm going to pass in my body with json.stringify, where I'm going to pass in my object with my tag set equal to my active tag. Now, instead of setting the tags with that response, I want to set an images state so that I can take all those images and show them in the UI. So I'm going to create one more instance of state. And if you want to manage your state a little bit easier, maybe you can look into using user reducer. But just for the sake of the demo, it's a little bit easier to see these line by line as we're working through it. But we can see here, let's make this images and let's say set images where we can see after it works through and actually grabs that data. We're going to say that we want to run set images and we're going to set that equals to data, but this time it's going to be data resources. Now, before we actually show this inside the UI, let's text this out. So I'm going to console log out my images. And when I reload the page, if I click any of those tags, we can see that it makes that request. It returns images. And these are going to be the same exact images that we saw inside of the Cloudinary dashboard when we were looking at this inside of the advanced search. Now, just like last time, we want to show this in the UI. So I'm going to scroll down and below our tags. I'm similarly going to go ahead and just simply paste in this snippet. But what we're doing is we're creating an unordered list again. But this time we're displaying it as grid because we're going to show a bunch of images inside of it where I'm going to loop through every single image and I'm going to simply dump it into an, a list item with that image. But now when I reload my application, if I click astronomical object, we can see those exact same images that we saw before. And if we want to see something else such as bird, we can see those demo images that I sent up before, which includes those birds flying inside of the beach. Or if I click beach, we can see all the images associated with the beach. While this is just a simpler use case of being able to browse some images based off of the tag, you can imagine a lot of things we can do by being able to programmatically see what's inside of all these images without having to manually go through, especially if we have a lot of tags. We can gain a lot of power by combining the capabilities of AI with media management, where there's a lot of things we can do by being able to have vision into our imagery. What's your favorite use case of AI or machine learning with media, such as images and video? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about Cloudinary and cool AI features like face detection, check out my video generating thumbnail images using face detection in Cloudinary.
or if you want to learn how you can use the Next.js image component with Cloudinary to create blurred placeholders, check out my video Next.js image with Cloudinary, where I teach you how to create those blurred images and use them inside of the component. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.